You are now listening to the Serious Growth Podcast with your host, Leo Costa Jr. Roll tape, baby. <laughs> Welcome to Serious Growth, y'all. You know, this is going to be where the truth be told, even if it's not popular. And in some cases, especially if it's not popular. But I can tell you this. I guarantee you this. What I'm going to tell you is based on truth. It's based on physiology. It's based on principle. It's based on application instead of theory, at least at first. Today's uh, topics for me are going to be just uh, random thoughts, tips, and tricks of the trade that just comes came to my mind this morning. And, uh, you know, one of the things I've noticed that's happened to me as I've gotten older, besides all kinds of shit going downhill, is more things seem to be, seems up seems to be down, and down seems to be up. It seems like it's like that more and more as I've gotten older. And I wonder why. I don't know that things have changed that much. But it just, to me, it's an actual fact. You know, one of the things I talk about uh, a lot more these days on some other videos, and I talk about them sometimes over and over again, not because there's, I've got nothing else to talk about, it's because in my mind, I think it's actually the, the secret code, the pathway to, you know, success in the long run. For example, like learning how to love the process of anything that you're doing. Let's make no mistake. I think it applies across the board. Uh, but you got to learn how to love, truly love the process instead of focusing on the result, the outcome. Because I tell you, it is about the journey that that's going to make you happy. But if you're always thinking about, you know, I got people that are to this day, one of the things that bothers me as a, 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 a personal trainer, a personal coach, is it bothers me when people don't follow through because I take that personally. Like it's, it's something that I'm not doing right. And so that's my, ongoing dilemma and i'm always trying to think okay why is that happening why do most people end up failing because that's exactly what happens i don't you know this is not going to be something that's negative i'm just telling you how it is why do we fail why do we quit on ourselves sometimes you know i think that that it's sometimes it's just that we're focusing too much on what the outcome might look like and be focusing on that. You know, that, that those people that are doing that, like the idea of it more than the reality of it. And yet we're all the, you know, you think that you're going to become happier. Like when you're dr dreaming and fantasizing about this outcome, but whatever it might be, it might be in your training, how you want your body to look, you know, it, it, it could be anything. But when you're just focusing on that and not really understanding that it's going to be about the process, the journey, the happiness that you're going to get from your, any kind of a program that you're doing, training or nutrition, is going to come from the, the suffering and the journey that you go on to get the results that you're looking for. That's where the happiness is. And yet we don't most people don't focus on that part. I mean, I can understand why that is because the reality is in bodybuilding, you know, one of the most unnatural things for your body to do is to put on muscle. That's going absolutely against your, what your physiology wants to do. I'm not telling you anything that you haven't heard before, but it's still fact. That's why I have that decal on my gym that says, results reflect the struggle and we've heard that but that's where it's at and i would tell you that and this is the part that's sort of you know we're down is up and up is down i would tell you that 
I think it's more important for you and for us to suffer on a daily basis. And if you're happy and you're not struggling, my my opinion is you better go look for something that's going to cause you to struggle because that happiness that you're feeling is fleeting. It ain't going to last. All right, let's take a quick break so I can tell you about our product. Do you want a bone crushing grip? Good, because you're gonna get one with the amazing new TRS Gripper. It's a progressive grip builder with longer handles and a special ergonomic design that's like a dozen hand grippers in one. Start off easy and work your way up to quickly build your grip strength from wet noodle to pulverizing. The package includes a video from the world famous strength coach, Dr. Russ Horine, the man who worked with Leo Costa to help bring you Big Beyond Belief and the Bulgarian Power Burst. Dr. Horine shows you a simple and easy to follow workout plan that takes just minutes a day right from in front of your TV set if you want. So click on the link below and let's get started building you a stronger, firmer, bone crushing grip. Suffering is the secret. Suffering and failing, learning how to fail day in and day out. You're going to feel like a loser. I have. You know, sometimes I think, shit, man, all these things that I've tried come up short. You know, you, because you think that when you're looking at other people, especially like when you read these motivational books, you get the idea or feeling sometimes that how can they do it? It's about learning how to embrace the suffering and embrace failure on a regular basis. Let's talk about some, some, um, some misconceptions in our industry. To this day, people still think that as it relates to putting on muscle, that lifting heavier is the most efficient way. It is not, not specifically. That doesn't mean that you're not going to put on muscle when you're training heavier, but it's not the most efficient way. Specifically, lifting heavier will make you stronger. That's the truth. And if your training is about that specifically, then you're on the right path. If if not, you're on a on the wrong path. You will be disappointed. Fat is not the culprit. So many times we hear that eating fat in your diet is unhealthy. Specifically, it's not. Fat is not the culprit. Fat, eating a, a diet that's higher in fat is actually healthier. Eating a diet higher in fat stimulates more bile release in your body, more digestive enzymes. It increases that as just one of its benefits. In fact, the, the diet or the macro that is the potentially the most harmful diet uh, macro is the carbohydrate macro. That's where the problem is because your body can only store so much in your built-in reservoirs where your carbohydrate is stored. And then when you are eating too many carbohydrates, then the physiological response is your body's going to store that as a fat to protect you from having high blood sugar. I can't tell you how many times I've heard, well, you need carbohydrate for energy. I mean, it, it provides energy, but you don't need it. And fat has just gotten hammered over the years. Here's another thing. In bodybuilding, you'll hear oftentimes uh, people will tell you that you need to eat more times a day. But as it relates to being more efficient, unless you're trying to put on muscle, if you're trying to put on muscle, then eating 
more times a day will help do that because when you start eating more times a day, then your body is going to want to eat more times a day and it's going to want to eat more. You're going to start eating more when you start eating more times a day. Now, that that's going to really benefit you if you're trying to put on muscle because you need to push your body really hard and make it uncomfortable to put on muscle. You can't eat three meals a day and think that you're going to get up to a certain body weight. I mean, if you're smaller in stature, that's a different story. But if you're if you want to put on muscle, you have to eat more times today. You have to eat two to three hours or every two to three hours. And you have to be uncomfortable to do that. You have to make your body uncomfortable to send it into you know, fight or flight to force it, always forcing the body to have to eat more to put on muscle. But you're actually, in more times than not, you're actually a lot more efficient if you're eating fewer times a day. One benefit of that is that when you're eating fewer times a day, your body stimulates more bile. I don't know if you've heard of that. Bile, that's an emulsifier in your body. It's not a digestive enzyme, but it is an emulsifier. And when you eat fewer times a day, fasting is also uh, a part of this conversation that we're having right now, but eating fewer times a day will force your body to release more bile. That makes your body more efficient, not less. Doesn't that seem like it's counterintuitive? Because it is. Doesn't that seem like it's up or down? It's the, you know, it's the opposite of what you might think. But that's that's how it works. That's how your physiology works. And it's, there's data out there that's, that proves that when you eat three times a day consistently versus six or seven times a day, whatever it is, unless you're putting on muscle, I'm going to be clear about that. There's not much benefit at all, if any, eating more times a day. And I will tell you, for you that are out there, unless you're a, a meathead bodybuilder or somebody who is just really into eating it's job it's a chore to eat six or seven times a day day in and day out and for those most of you that are out there you don't really need to do that so just keep that in mind unless that's something that you like doing i mean that's fine but know why you're doing stuff keep asking yourself why am i doing this what is the reason how about cardio Doing more cardio gets you in worse shape. Well, how can that be? Well, when you get get past 25 to 30 minutes, yes, your body, as you start doing more and more cardio, like when you get up to an hour, 45 minutes to an hour, your body will burn more fat. But what you must have to realize is that your body starts burning more lean weight, muscle weight. Is that what you want to do? I mean, if you if that's your goal, that's good. You're on the right path. You know, part of this whole thing that I'm constantly doing is making sure that you're on the right path for what you're doing. You have to be congruent with your training and your eating. You you're have to be congruent with your stated goal and how you have lined up and are implementing your training and nutrition program. But doing more cardio will make you skinny fat. It'll get you in worse shape. It'll make you stringy looking. Is that the look that you want? Again, it's counterintuitive. You know? What about, have you heard out there, what about the when people tell you don't eat past 6 o'clock? Most of the time it's doctors. I mean, you know, look, doctors are awesome. They don't know what the hell they're talking about when it comes to nutrition. They don't. Less than 1% of their training is in diet. Why the hell would you want to go to a doctor to get your information? Nutritionists sometimes aren't much better because they, I, in my opinion, they don't live in the, in the firsthand experience world of how diet really works, especially when you're a competitive athlete. That shit changes. When you're a competitive athlete, your, your uh, body 
it is operating in a different way. I mean, it sounds good. Like if you apply the information that you know about nutrition, like it, it should take this many calories to maintain body weight. It's a general rule of thumb and a lot of the nutritionists or no, you know, they're okay. I think they're a step better in many cases, in most cases than the doctor, but no, you can eat past six o'clock and not have a problem with gaining weight. Bodybuilders know this. When I was running around the bodybuilding circles, I can't tell you how many, many of us were eating, I mean, way late at night. Sometimes wake up in the middle of the night to eat. It, you know, your body's producing heat and it's about, about, I always, I always like to count calories. That's, that's one of the things I think that can, to get some control of tying into how much you should be eating. And that's still not a, an exact science because your physiology is a, is an amazing, amazing animal. How it works for us, how it tries to protect us. So be careful when you're, you know, if you're getting information, be careful and really understand where it's coming from. You know, I've talked about it before. Muscle is not built by science. Muscle is built in the gym. And it's based on unique firsthand experience. I mean, it's kind of what I'm talking about. So you don't, you don't necessarily have to worry about eating past, past six o'clock. Be more concerned about how many calories you're taking in. I did a live the other day and some guy uh, wanted me to define a macro macro. Well, macro is a, something that's a larger picture of something that's smaller macro being big, larger. And I started thinking about that, you know, saying people counting macros, of course, the macros are protein, carbs, and fat. But I, I almost think that you're not really counting macros, really, are you? Macronutrient, that's what that stands for. You're actually counting micros, micronutrients. In my mind, the micronutrients make up the macro. Maybe it's, maybe I'm just, you know, potato, potato, tomato, tomato, maybe. But in my mind, because I, th I keep thinking about everything to the nth degree, maybe I'm overthinking this, micronutrients. It's not a macro, it's, a, it's micronutrients make up the macro something that I think about. Pain when you're sore. I think bodybuilders know, know that you should. Although when I hear some people say they, they don't train, you know, a muscle for four days, uh, that makes me wonder why. I think it's just a, when I hear that train a muscle part every four days, I immediately think that, that bodybuilder does not want to really push themselves. I mean, do you think that you have to wait four days before you train a body part? You're underestimating your physiology. Really? It's, it's the opposite. You should train when you're sore, by the way. All that soreness is, is just a buildup of acids, lactic acids. It's probably you've changed your, your routine. In any look, if you're changing your routine in any kind of a, a nuance, even if you're training body parts out of order, I mean, any little change like that, your body is so, you know, it's so um, always trying to adapt to its environment more than you think, because it's trying to to protect you and to help you survive whatever you're whatever environment that you're providing for the body, your body is trying to help you survive. It's always trying to take care of you. So you should be able to train a body part once every five, three to five hours. So I really question and wonder why, you know, people say, well, you should train a body part once every four I understand that some of these people are in the gym for two and a half hours and they're taking their body. So now that could be the case that that bodybuilder that takes it way past they've taken their body, you know, to the point where it's going to just go over the edge and crash. Okay. Maybe that's the case, but I have, I think that that is a, 
real few and minor uh, beasts that's out there. I think people right now, I think in these days after, you know, I look in these damn what's going on inside these gyms anymore. There is no training environment. There's no intensity. You got to be, you got to have intent when you're, when you're training, it's not there. So it wouldn't surprise me at all that, you know, some of this is just uh, because, you know, people are just not pushing themselves like they should. You got to be uncomfortable. Why would you want to push yourself to that extent? Who who wants to do that? Only the real serious people do that, I guess. So sometimes this stuff just irritates me and it, I just got to get it off my chest before I explode. But you got to be, you got to make yourself uncomfortable in life, in the gym. And it never stops. That's where all your success and all your happiness as we're wrapping this baby up this is where all your happiness and all your success is going to be embrace pain in, inflict emotional pain on yourself physical pain do it on a regular you know one of the things that we know about adversity and obstacles is that if you're having like an obstacle that you have to overcome, maybe it's your body, you're overcoming a body part that won't um, won't respond, or you have these problems that you perceive problems that you have in your life. Don't put yourself in denial because here again, like we talked before, here's the misconception. When you have a problem in your life, when you're trying to solve, you want to get into solving mode or solution mode. That's where you want to be. We're, we're going to, you're going to have problems all the time. Check that out. I mean, once you think about it, once you get rid of a problem or you're trying to solve a problem, you, you get other problems that come along. So what does that mean? It's ongoing. You have no choice but to either be in denial or to learn how to make problems something that you can solve. You have to make sure that you are not getting into to a state where you everything's overwhelming. When that happens, people start drinking more. They start self-medicating. Do you think you're going to be happier for that? It's going to make you happy, happier maybe temporarily. Solve your problems every day. Make yourself uncomfortable every day, and that will become your new normal. After a while, believe me, you're going to end up, if you're not having enough obstacles, if you're not enough being uncomfortable enough in your daily life, you will start looking for those things to challenge you. It kind of becomes a game. It's kind of fun, actually. But in the beginning, ooh, not good. All right. Until next time, go out and get some serious ass growth. Thanks for listening to the Serious Growth Podcast. For more episodes like the one you just listened to, subscribe to us on your mobile podcast app and leave us a review. If you'd like to reach out, you can find us online at SeriousGrowth.com. Until next time, train smart and train hard.